It has played on my mind that this channel is called Dark Entertainment Wales, but I have pretty much only covered the tales from the areas of South Wales, closest to where I'm from. So, the fat man went on tour. Not really. I went on holiday to North Wales with my partner and her family, but alas, whilst they're still having the time of their lives, I had to drag myself back because work was suffering without me. <coughs> Bullshit. And I am absolutely skint and couldn't afford it. I was swanning around North Wales for three days and saw four Neolithic sites consisting of two burial chambers and two settlements. Four castles, five if you include Harlech Castle, which I stopped at but didn't have any change for the parking, so had to mournfully take a photo of it before driving away. Several incredible lakes. The top of Snowdon, where I realised that my fear of heights is still alive and kicking, especially when the wind tries to take you off the top of the mountain like a hefty kite, and a feisty hedgehog with a turn of speed that surprised me. So let's begin with my trip up. The plan was to meet my girlfriend in North Wales since she was travelling from Carmarthen. I head straight up the A470 all the way. Now I saw a great many towns and villages that looked like potential places for a few creepy stories. But I was up against the schedule and couldn't stop in them. I suppose I'll have to take another jaunt up there at some point. What I did do, though, is stop to stick my face in the trough. Where I stopped was a hotel called the Brigands Inn, in a little village called Mathloid. A hotel with an interesting history and some very unusual occurrences. The hotel is an old coaching inn dating back to 1488, but the origin of the current building's name is based on the historical story. In the mid-1500s, Henry VIII appointed Lewis Owen as Deputy Chamberlain of North Wales and Baron of the Exchequer at Carnarvon. In the early to mid-1500s, the area was plagued by a large number of highway robberies and several deaths. This was the handiwork of a group of bandits known as the Red Bandits of Maloid, the Red Brigands, or the Red Raiders. It is speculated that the company was comprised of veterans of wars. This makes sense, since, towards the end of Henry VIII's life, in order to fund his wars with France, Spain and Scotland, Henry debased the currency. He diluted the precious metal used in the making of coins with a more common base metal. This had a disastrous effect on the poorer classes, as they were now no longer able to buy as much food for the same cost, or receive as much when they were selling their produce. Couple this with the fact that many working men were conscripted into Henry's army, and when they returned from war, they were unable to continue with their original lives due to illness, injury, or post-traumatic stress. Although they wasn't called that at that point. It was just called madness. In the mid-1500s, the number of homeless men, women and children was astronomical, and many turned to petty crime in order to survive. In 1554, Baron Owen led a charge and arrested 80 of the raiders. All 80 were found guilty and sentenced to be hung. In front of friends and family, the Baron hung all of the arrested bandits one by one. At one point, a woman stepped forward and with tears in her eyes begged the Baron to spare her youngest son. The Baron stared down at the woman as she pleaded before ushering the handman to drop the prisoner. The woman screamed and collapsed to the floor. It is reported that she picked herself up off the ground 
and approached the Baron's horse. She glared up at him through watery eyes and bearing her neck and with a rage in her voice screamed, These yellow breasts have given suck to those who shall wash their hands in your blood. The Baron laughed at her and spurred his horse on. Almost one year to the day, the Baron was riding his horse over the bridge when he was attacked and murdered. The area is still known as Baron's Gate. So to the hotel itself, I pranced in and ordered my grub, but when it arrived, I jumped on the unsuspecting waitress to find out what I could about the building. She grinned and began to tell me the tale of the bandit, and I knew that I'd struck gold. She informed me that there has been the odd sighting of two spirits, an old woman and an old man. It is unclear who they are, but according to staff, a medium arrived at the property and stated that the spirits that reside within the walls are not distressed in any way. For this reason, they keep to themselves and avoid being seen by staff. This has not always worked since the odd sighting out of the corner of their eyes has alerted them to the presence from time to time. According to the medium, who looked into the hotel, in one area of the dining room, there is a mysterious footprint that is said to belong to the old woman. She stated that the old woman is waiting for her closest relative to bring her newborn daughter to the exact spot where the footprint is and stare out of the window. Only then will her soul depart. Now for the old man. Once again, there have been very few sightings of this figure. However, the staff member who informed me of these stories did show me an old photo of the hotel which holds an interesting anomaly. Ignore the fact that my hairy melon is reflected in the glass. Judging by the way that people are dressed, it looks like the photo was taken in the late 1800s or early 1900s. But when you look closer, there is a figure who appears to be slightly transparent standing on the roof of the entrance area. All in all, it was a very nice meal and an interesting chat with staff. I'd recommend stopping by for a drink if you're up that way. I'll leave a link in the description for those interested. Well, that's all from us here at Dark Entertainment. We hope that you've enjoyed the episode. And if so, please remember to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon for all notifications. But remember to give it a big thumbs up as that will really help the channel grow. If you wish to get in contact with me, please leave a comment down below. I aim to answer all comments. Or you can find me on X or on Facebook. Or if you've got a story that you would like me to cover, a location that you'd like me to look into, or a suggestion for the channel, feel free to email me at dark underscore entertainment at outlook.com. And remember, stay dark. Stay creepy and always laugh. Ta-ta! <laughs>